Good morning. My name is Kyle Houchins. I'm a tech and a trainer for McNeil, and uh, this is Getting Started Rhino for Mac. Um, haven't done a Rhino for Mac for a while, and so this one's going to be fun. Um, if you're new to the Getting Started format, at least my Getting Started format, um, basically what I do is either the night before or the morning of, I do some kind of lumpy, scratchy sketch of an idea of something that I'm going to try and pull off today. And then we talk about strategy and how to approach it and all this kind of stuff. And so for this, this session, I'm going to do this kind of uh, rotary multi-tool design, um, which is fairly recognizable if anybody's used one of these things before. Um, and we're going to talk about this shape and the strategy behind how to approach it. Um, at first glance, it seems like it would be really simple, right? It seems like it's kind of a revolved shape, but it's actually not. There's kind of a lot more to it. So we're going to um, take a look at this and see what we can't pull off in about an hour, hour and a half, or if it really goes into the weeds, we can talk about kind of how to manage that. But the goal here is for me to put myself in the same situation that you're in where somebody walks into your office and hands you something and says, you know, build this and you've never seen it before. And you have to kind of think on the fly and figure out what uh, what it is you're doing and how to build it and all that kind of stuff. So with the constraints of time, like I said, I'm going to try and drop this in about under an hour and a half. If it ends up going longer than that, um, we'll talk about how to handle that. But I think I'm going to try and pull this off in about an hour. Um, if it goes crazy long or if something goes into the fan, which occasionally it does, um, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about why it all went bad, where it all went bad, and, and strategies for trying to fix it. So like I said, these are unrehearsed. This is the first time I've tried to build this. Um, I am seeing it, you know, with fairly fresh eyes, even though I stayed up last night thinking about it. Um, but uh, the idea here is to for us to all be kind of in the same boat and figure out how to do this together. So if um, like I said, if the model goes off the rails, we'll talk about why it went off the rails and try and figure out how to fix it. And at the end of the day, hopefully we end up with something that's that's uh, that's usable uh, in in the time period that it's that, that we've allowed. So um, also these sessions are for you that are supposed to be interactive. So feel free to hit the chat and jump in and ask questions. If I do something that you that you don't understand or went too fast or I'm mumbled because I was modeling and thinking and talking all at the same time and not doing a very good job of any of those, um, hit the chat, let me know, and I will do my best to go back and try and explain it a different way or um, or break out and do a little side session or whatever, try and figure out uh, how to answer the question. So um, with that, let's go ahead and get rolling. Um, with all models, I'm going to just start from a blank page here. We start with picture command. I'm going to find the drawing and I'm just going to drop it in the space. And in this, for this demo, I don't have any dimensions on this thing. I don't know how big it is or, or really care. If I did care, let's, let's just say for argument's sake that this thing is eight inches long. The way that I figure that out is I'll just actually make what I like to call a hockey stick. And I make a vertical line that gives me a, a point of reference on the drawing, click, and then let's just say it's eight inches. And it looks like I'm working in millimeters here, so that's not going to work. Let's change that so that I know what I'm doing. Otherwise, I will be making all sorts of decisions about wall thickness and things like that that don't have any basis in reality. So let's go ahead and change that and all right so now we're working in inches and let's start again and for if you've ever been in that situ situation it, you need to change its file settings and then that pops open and then the um, model and layout units and in this case we probably want our layout units to be the same we're not going to do a layout but i always change the two of them just to make sure that they match. Otherwise, you'll have a model in inches and a layout in millimeters, and sometimes that can be confusing. So that's where those live. So let's go ahead and scale this appropriately. And I'm going to just, again, go ahead and just eyeball that hockey stick start. I'm going to click, and then I'm going to just type 8 Enter, and that's going to give me a line that is 
eight inches long, and then I'm just going to bring it back down so that it's easy for me to find. And then I'm going to scale the drawing, and I'm going to use the beginning of my line as a snap, and then I'm going to use the end of the body of the drawing, and I'm going to scale it out until it snaps to my line. And then I know that thing is scaled at about eight inches. All right, so now that we've got that nailed down, I'm going to click on this and I'm going to change the materials a little bit because right now if I were to work over this I wouldn't be able to see it so if I click on I'm going to delete this one I had a I had the original one in the scene so I'm going to get rid of it come on there we go all right well it looks like I grabbed the wrong one let's start let's do this again <laughs> remember what I said about going off the rails <laughs> All right, let's start it. Let's start from the beginning. All right, let's get a picture. Let's drop it in our scene. Let's scale it again. We're going to go about eight inches. And we're just going to scale from here. To there all right then i can get rid of my line and then i'm going to click on my material and it's going to bring up the properties i'm going to go down to the object transparency and i'm going to crank that up a little bit which makes this fade into the background a little bit and i'm going to just set it somewhere over the origin so that you know it's got some anchor in reality the last thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move this drawing out of the modeling window. And the reason that I like to do that is because the um, if I were to leave this image in the middle of the scene, if I were to shade the model, the model is going to cut the image in half and then I can't really see what I'm doing. So the last step of this is I'm going to actually just assign it to a layer. I'm going to change the object layer. And then I can just lock that layer and now it's here. And if I wanted to, I could change the name of this. And if I was doing, if I had more than one drawing, if I had a front, top, right, whatever, I would put each one of these images on a layer because I can turn them on and off as needed. So I can make what I refer to as a reference cube. So if I had a right view and a, and a left view and a top and a bottom, I would just set those all up on different layers so I could turn them on and off individually. So now that we've got this set up, and I need to change my OSnap settings in here. There we go. I run my OSnaps disabled, by the way. Um, and the reason for that is um, if you hold the Option key, that's the toggle to turn them on and off. And I like that because I can pick specifically where the thing is going to snap, as opposed to having it kind of schizophrenically fling all over the screen and saying, snap here, snap here, snap here, snap here. It's like, settle down. Nobody needs that kind of energy this early in the morning. Um, so what I want to do very first thing is I'm going to actually just establish a center line for this thing. And maybe this is necessary. Maybe it's not. It seems like a good idea. So I'm going to just drop a center line in the scene. And looks like my, my lines are very thick. That seems very thick, but let's, I'll roll with it. Um, and what we can do, let me just check my line type here. There's been some changes done to the, to the line type, uh, print width. The default is big. All right. We'll roll with it. That's fine. So, and then I'm going to, uh, I'm actually going to adjust my drawing a little bit because I want it to be vaguely centered over my center line here so let's pull that down and we're going to call that we'll call that the center line we're going to have some revolved objects and so it'll it'll be helpful to have that center line so that we can we can reference off of that i'm going to use this little window pane to hide that and get more screen space and then let's talk a little bit about like how we want to build this thing and the the general idea right this thing up here obviously is a revolved part so we're going to just go ahead and roll with that this back here is mostly a revolved part 
um, looks like there's definitely some revolved aspect, maybe the maybe the end of this little stress reducer and the cable itself is round, but maybe this has a different aspect ratio. Maybe it's round. We'll play with it and see how it goes. One of the things I like about Rhino and its, and its ability to be able to kind of turn on a dime is we can actually design in 3D. So even though I don't have a top view or a, or a front or a right or any other, you know, views on this thing, I can, I can, kind of evaluate this thing in 3D from the image. And the other decision that we're going to need to make early is, are we going to just roll 100% NURBS on this? Are we going to just surface model this whole thing? Or maybe this shape in here is actually kind of conducive to a sub D. Um, we'll make that decision on the fly, but let's build the easy stuff first. And the first thing I'm going to start with is just a polyline and we're going to just hold down the option key which snaps to my line. I'm going to shift and then I'm going to click and then I'm going to shift to go straight up. And then I'm going to go over here and then I'm going to shift to go straight over. Down and then let's kind of let's activate this line right here so we know that those kind of line up and then we'll just call this the you know whatever the rotary shaft is or whatever and i'm going to just bring it down so it's a closed object and we'll go ahead and revolve this this is our curve to revolve this is our revolve axis Oops, let's snap it And then we're going to do a full, a full rotation so we can go all the way around and roll that all the way out. All right. So that gives us our first object. And if we look at this in shaded mode, you can see that that gives us the begin, beginning of our first part. All right. So let's go ahead and just build the next piece, which which also we're going to start from the center line. I'm going to do this in wireframe and we're going to start from here. And we're going to come up over shift. This one looks like it has a little bit of a curve in it, but I'm going to do it straight to start with anyways. And also I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to do this straight and I'll show you why in a second. So we'll finish that and we'll kind of rough out this shape. Now this section here, if I shift command click to sub object select and this section here actually have some curve to them. So let's blow this up and separate it into its individual segments. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to click these two parts and I'm going to change their degree, and I have a hotkey for that. Um, the command actually is change degree. Um, and I'm going to change those to degree three. And the reason I'm going to do that is you'll notice that now these guys have four control points. Well, if they've got four control points, that means I can pick these two control points, and I can just drag them and get that beautiful arc. Same thing here. They're beautifully spaced change degree did a great job of of spacing that and then i'm just going to add those two little two little arcs there which give us everything that we need i can join this back up and we can revolve it again using the same axis and we've got our second part right go shaded view so we're sailing like bill murray we're sailing, we're sailors, right? So <clears throat> we can decide how you know quickly we wanna start jumping into details. Maybe you're a person who's like, really likes to focus in on the details on something and you say, okay, well, I don't wanna rough this out and then go back. I actually wanna just build this very methodically and go part by part. That's fine. So let's, in that case, uh, let's go ahead and add these little details here. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate this. And that will hide everything except the part that I'm working on. And that way it keeps it, it keeps me organized and 
I don't have any clutter in the screen or anything like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have to determine like, is this a little any or is it an Audi, right? Is it a is it a embossed detail or is it a debossed detail? Like, what is it? And in this case, I think I want it to be an Audi. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to the curve menu and I'm going to duplicate uh, or extract an ISO curve from this particular surface. I'm going to hit the T key to toggle it in a different direction. And I'm going to grab the one kind of right in the middle. And I'm going to drop that. Looks like it snapped up there. Let's snap it right there. Get rid of that one. And then what I'm going to do is click this guy and I'm going to split it with a point. And I want to split this with a point and I'm going to just clip it there and there. And I'm going to get rid of that end, get rid of that end. And if we go to perspective view, you can see that this has dropped a curve of the correct line, you know, of the correct size right on the surface here. And let's I'm gonna modify this for a second. This those really heavy curves are bothersome to me. Let me fix this for a second. So if I go to my display modes, wireframe objects, control points are huge. Let's go to curves. Oh good lord, that's why it's so huge. Let's go drop those down. All right, that'll be a little less obtrusive. There we go. All right, so let's make this a let's make this a piped object and I'm going to come in here and we're going to roll down to the pipe round caps. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball something that feels about the right size and let it roll. Go to shaded view and we can see that we've built that detail right there. So all we have to do now is essentially just take this detail and we're going to do a uh, polar array. And so we'll go, this is the center of the polar array. And actually we wanna go in the right hand view before we do that. Otherwise it'll go winging off into space. So we'll have that be the center. And let's do like, I don't know, let's do like 11 or 12 or something like that and just see what it looks like. And we're going to let it roll. And that, you know, that feels pretty decent. If we do an odd number, we, you know, it ends up not being a symmetrical thing. So maybe what we want to do is do 12. And that seems to be like a decent amount of spacing for those things. We go to the perspective view and take a look at it. And so we'll just go ahead and let that roll. And what we can do then is, is you know, go into render view and evaluate it and see if we're happy with that. And in this case, I think that's going to work out. I think that's going to work all right. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and commit that. So I'm going to grab these guys and these guys, and we'll just do a Boolean union. And if we're living right, it should do its thing. If it doesn't, what the things that you want to take a look at are. The things that make Booleans fail, especially with revolved objects, are seams. And in this case, this is the seam for this part right here. And in this case, it looks like it, it handled it well. But if it had died, you may need to actually rotate the texture a little bit to get it off the seam. Or there's a command called surf seam where you can actually move the seam on the surface. And I'll show you that. I grab this guy. And I say, this is the closed object for seam. Oh, you're not going to let me do it. Ah, I got to extract it first. Probably surface. So let's, let's extract this guy. And then we'll do surf seam. So if I click on this, you can see that it allows me to be able to move the seam from one place to another. And, and in this case, I think that I'm going to leave it alone, but it it allows you to be able to modify the seam. So if I needed to, I could pull the seam over here, and that would allow me to be able to get the, the Boolean to behave itself instead of, you know, being right on the seam. In this case, it worked, so we're going to be happy and move on.
All right. And so that's our first part. So let's bring everything back using the show command. Uh, again, I have that hot key on a, on a key. So now we can either skip to the easy bit, which is coming down here and building the cord. Or we could jump into the hard bit and go, you know, from there. But I'm, I'm of the mindset, why make things more difficult than they need to be right off the bat? So let's go ahead and just draw this guy out. And I'm going to hold down shift, come out here, hold down shift, come out here. And you can see that the, the center line on my part, you know, on this thing is a little off. And so if I were to revolve this, I'm going to end up with a very thin cord. And so I think what I might do is actually bump this up a little bit to accommodate for the fact that my drawing is off, right? You can see that there's a lot more weight on this thing. This is not centered. So I can revolve it and then I around the center line to get the correct width. And then I can always move it later and, you know, put it into position. So let's just revolve again. And I'm going to revolve this. And then we're going to use this as our center line. And we'll go full, full tilt. And then let's go to wireframe and see how it lines up. And so we can see that, like, you know, we're a little bit high here. So I'm going to move this. I'm going to move this whole thing just down a little bit like that. And that'll put it, you know, kind of where it needs to be. Now, I may reconsider that decision because I have a symmetrical detail down here, right? All these little, these little dents. And so I actually might, might wait before I move it because I can still use the center line in order to be able to flip these curves. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's, let's add that detail and I'm going to just bring this down and make my little cutout. And this is where I talk about rule of three. You may use three points to make a corner. You don't make 25 points to make a corner. It's only three. And we can adjust the shape of the corner by moving the points farther apart or closer together. All right. And so I'm going to copy this, drag, and I'm going to tap Alt. See the plus sign shows up. And then I'm going to drag and tap Alt. And then I'm going to drag and tap Alt. Now, I'm an eyeball modeler at best. And so what I might do, and it looks to me like these may start thick and get thin. Um, maybe what this does actually is it does something like this, where this one's fat and then it gets thinner as it goes to this way. In that case, let's use tween. Tween is kind of cool. And what we can do is... We can tween between this one and this one. And you can see that it actually proportionally modifies those to go, you know, this one's a little thinner, this one's a little thinner, this one's a little thinner, and this one's the thinnest. And it also spaces them accurately. So I'm going to go ahead and roll with that, and we'll use, we'll use those. And one other trick, because I'm lazy, is I like to actually just connect these things because I can do one wire cut instead of having to do four wire cuts. So if I grab all this and join it, and then we'll go to perspective view. And then we can do a couple of things. I can just shift drag out a surface on the using the using the extrude dot, which gives me something like that, which I can then come up here and do a Boolean difference, assuming that my normals are all in the right direction and they're not. So let's check the DIR command and it looks like they're going inwards. See how the arrows are going inwards? If I flip this, then I do my Boolean, it should behave itself. And if it doesn't, we'll do something different. There we go. So that's that shape, but actually I didn't want I didn't want it to go all the way through. So we're going to have to deal with that. So let's just mirror this. And we'll do a Boolean through there. And then we'll get our cord back here in a second. 
All right, so let's get rid of this and this. I don't need those anymore. So now I've got this thing going on, but I don't have, I lost my cord. So let's, let's control, uh, command shift click the edge of this. And we're going to, we're going to start dragging and we're going to tap option. And that's going to copy that circle. And then we'll select it because we know it's there. And then we're just going to use the extrude dot, drag that through, and then cap and Boolean. And we'll put the cord back to where it was supposed to be. We can always go back and fill it this stuff at a later date. I'm not going to worry too much about that. The other thing that we could do if we don't want to fill it, it, like if we just need stuff for a rendering, we can come in here and we can use something like the um, the um, the display fillets, the, um, oh, my brain is fading. The, let's see the render fillets. Where are they? Show the properties being, here we go. Edge softening. There it is. <laughs> we can force edge softening on this stuff. And if we turn it on, what it does is it's just going to, it's just going to do, um, it's going to do, um, softening for the edges of the, of the render mesh. And in this case, you know, if we did like, like that and applied it, and then we go to rendered mode. doesn't appear that it's doing it. Let's force it. Uh, okay, it's too small. Look, adds a little fillet. I don't know if you can see that in rendered mode or not, but it's supposed to be adding a little fillet to that, which it doesn't seem to be doing. Interesting. Sounds like that is a bug that needs to get filed. Let's see. Yeah, it doesn't look like it likes that. All right, so we'll skip that for now. Um, that is an option. Uh, if we were to crank up the render mesh uh, and dig into that a little bit, that can be a tool that you can use to try and get the uh, some visual fillets. They're not actual fillets, but they're, they're visual. I'm going to just cap this so that it's a closed object. And then let's bring everything back. All right, so we've got our front and our, we've got our easy parts done. So now we need to start talking about like, how do we get into, you know, the body of this thing? And there's a couple of ways that we could approach this. We could do simply a revolved object, right? Ignoring kind of the, the details and the, and the, you know, the complexities of this additional surface and then go back and add those details as we go. Um, or we can do a two rail sweep so that we can get, um, you know, our top and our bottom have a slightly different profile. I'm gonna just hide these. Right, so our top and our bottom have slightly different profiles. So maybe what we wanna do is a, is a two rail sweep and make two halves. The other thing that's that's on the table is sub D, and I think in this particular case, um, sub D might not be the dumbest way to approach this. Let's let's go down that path and see um, how it feels, and we can always bail out if it looks like it's not going to work. So let's start with a single plane. And we're going to do what I like to refer to as paper doll modeling, which is basically just we're going to just make the shape but we're going to do it in a very kind of paper dolly kind of way right so we're gonna gonna grab this edge and i'm going to just square that up scaling it to zero and then we're just going to extrude out and what we want to do is keep in mind rule of three and if you have seen any of my videos before you're gonna roll your eyes because you're going to hear this one more time but the idea behind any type of transition, whether it be NURBS, whether it be a curve, whether it be sub D, is it takes three points to make a transition, right? So if we are making a transition, this is just an anchor point, one, two, three, and then an anchor point out. If we look at this, this is the transition, 
right, right here. So this, if we pull it closer, it tightens up. This, if we pull it closer, it tightens up. If we pull them farther apart, it softens, right? And that is the exact same thing that we're going to use in sub D. So this is your point one, this is your point two, this is your point three. This is the transition that we're trying to make, right? This curve right here. We don't need 15 faces, right? We don't need all of that stuff. We only need three. And so in this case, I'm going to allow some space in here for this to happen. So if I control shift click, drag out one more face. I've got another transition here, which means I need, I need one, two, and then I'm going to need a third one here. I can then adjust these like that. If I don't have those three points, I can't get that curve. I just can't. Same thing here. I've got a transition here that needs to come back, which means this is my first point. That's my second point. That's my third point. Just adjust them to match my shape. And I should do this in wireframe so I could see what in the world I'm doing. Okay, so that gives us our basis for our object. And if we switch to box uh, to smooth mode, you can see that our shape is kind of falling into place. And we've got some adjustments to make and all that kind of stuff, and that's fine, but we can deal with that later. We can also crease some points in here so that we can uh, capture our shape a little better. And so if I crease that point and if I crease this point, you'll see that it captures, captures the shape a little better. Now, in smooth mode, we can do a little bit of adjusting to get our shape back. But most of the heavy lifting is going to be done in box mode because we want to make sure we model in box mode. We just tweak and adjust a little bit in smooth mode, and that gives us kind of the shapes that we need. All right, now I'm going to cheat and I'm going to just mirror this because I'm lazy. No, no, because I know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's mostly because I'm lazy. Now, now I've got my everything's lining up nicely. If I go to box mode, I can then just pull this where it needs to be. All right, I've still got my I still got my shapes doing kind of what they need to do. Whether these join smoothly or not, we'll determine that at a little bit later down the road, but let's pull these into shape. And we're gonna ignore these little divots for the time being. We'll decide whether we're going to model those in sub D or whether we're actually gonna model those in NURBS a little bit down the road. So if I go here and let's join these two, makes, the basis of our shape and you can see that this is kind of coming together nicely right so if i go to if i go to the perspective view you can see that i've got the basic body of this thing and if we go to shaded view so you can see what's going on i've got the basic body of this thing but it's still flat right which is fine because i'm going to pull this out here to about where my thickness is going to be and then what i can do is i can grab this edge and this edge double click in the middle And then I can just pull this in to the center line. And the reason that that works is because I've got snappy dragging turned on to my gumball. So, the, so my gumball respects the O snap. So I'm gonna do the same thing down here. I'm gonna pick control shift click this edge, control shift click this edge, double click. And then I'm gonna pull this in to the center line of this part using snappy dragging. And that's starting to give me a little bit of my shape, right? And I'm gonna pull the entire part back out a little bit and we can determine whether that's enough shape, that's not enough shape, and we can mirror this and take a look and kind of get a feel for the volume. And we can look at the top view and we can say, OK, is that fat enough? Is it not fat enough? And because we mirrored with history, if I pull this out a little bit, um, actually, I did, it looks like I didn't have history on. Let's turn history on and mirror this again. All 
So if Hi. I move the... Hi, yes. so sorry. I just wanted to ask, um, how come you would mirror and not revolve like you did the other pieces? Because um, because this is a sub D part, um, we're building it uh, we're building it a little differently than we would revolve. Um, if you were going to do this in NURBS, you could start with a revolve. Um, you could start with a revolved part for um, sub D as well. The problem is this is not necessarily a revolved um, symmetric object. The top shape and the bottom shape are different. So if you revolved it, you'd end up with not you know quite the correct profile. Now you could always pull it into shape later, but this is for me, it gives it a little bit more direct um, kind of access to the shape with a little less fussing later. So, um, so that's why I revolved it instead of, or so that's why I'm that's why I'm doing it, you know, paper doll style instead of um, instead of uh, revolving it. Thank you. Sure thing. So let's let's go and let's bridge between this edge and this edge. Actually, let's just stitch these. We can decide whether that's enough detail or not. And it looks like looks like we actually need to bridge this instead of stitching because stitching actually doesn't give us enough information. So let's do that. Let's get these guys. there and we're going to use one segment we'll apply it and that gives us a row down the center here right we can then take a look at that maybe it needs just a little bit of adjustment to kind of stick it back where it came from and then let's do the same thing on the bottom let's go ahead and bridge this edge And this edge. Again, if you click the two ends and then double click in the middle, it fills it in. We'll bridge between there. We're going to use one segment. If we were to use two segments, it would give us a center line, right? Like that, which might be useful. So I think I actually am going to go with the second segment because that gives me a center line profile that I can work with and I can take a look and make sure that that is landing right kind of on my art which it is and I think I think I'm actually going to go ahead and add a center line to the top view here so I'm going to pick these guys and let's go ahead and add a Let's add an edge in here. Sorry, I'm going to do it this way. And I'm going to stick this at 0.5, which will stick it right in the middle. And it looks like there was a little distortion from that. So let's fix that. Whoa. Yeah. Held my undo down too many times. So let's add an edge back again. There we go. And that drops it right in the midpoint. So now if we look at this, we can see that we've got a really pretty accurate representation of what our sketch was. And we can make a few adjustments as necessary. Um, we can, you know, dial this in a little bit closer, pull this back a little bit. And it looks like that little detail on there, we may need to, we may need to either overbuild it a little bit, or maybe we can get it. Like that. All right. So we've got pretty much what we were hoping for. So I think that actually 
is probably the right choice as far as the way to build this thing, as opposed to going going nerves. And you certainly could do that. There's nothing wrong with either way, but I think this is a little bit direct, more direct path to get there. Now, we've got a couple of little details on this thing that that we're missing. And and in here, right, there's this little kind of any outy bit. And maybe what we want to do is, is add a few edges and get that in. Um, if we come up here and go to shaded view and then see which edges, which faces it are, it's going to be these two. We can look at doing something like uh, doing an inset, which will give us another row of edges in here that we can play with. And then we can take these guys and we can either sync these faces in because there's going to be a, there's going to be actually a little you know a little a switch or something in there and then we can play with this pull that into shape and then we can grab these guys pull that into shape and that gives us our little detail and it looks like we lost this edge, so let's add one more edge in here. And we can pull that kind of back where it needs to be. And then we can decide whether, you know, are these edges down here helping or hurting? And if they're hurting, we can just get rid of them. You know, I can just grab this and delete it, and that's going to soften that back out. It's one of the nice things about Rhino Sub D is it's really durable. So you can actually try stuff and see whether it's it's doing what you want it to do or not. And in this case, you know, we can chase this through the model and see, you know, does that does that do what we want it to or not? And I think just getting rid of this one down here is doing what I want. Whereas getting rid of, you know, this one is changing the highlight on the center line, which I don't want, and getting rid of this one. It, it adds this edge up here, but I think there's going to be a distortion that I don't like. So I'm going to just leave it where we just get rid of this bottom edge down here because that seems to be doing everything that we want it to do. And the highlights are tracking nicely and we've got, you know, the information we need. And it also gives us these two points right here, which we can, we can use to add a little bit more sharpness or a little less sharpness or whatever to that indent, depending on, you know, how we want that thing to feel and we can play with these two as well and adjust that you know to see how that thing is gonna come in or out depending on you know on our needs so i think i think that's probably the correct layout and then we can decide whether you know this highlight is a problem or not at a later date and and worry about it then but let's let's go ahead and tighten this this edge up a little bit, and I'm going to bring this in till it intersects, and then I'm going to bring it down till it intersects, and that is going to give us a nice finish on the back of this because once we trim these together, once we convert to nerves and trim those back together, that'll that'll end up nicely. Now, one thing I want to talk about is this edge down here. If I look at it from the top view, it's a little bit raggedy. And I think I want that to be a little bit smoother. So I'm going to double click to select it. I'm going to scale in one, di one direction to flatten that out. And then I can decide whether, you know, the shape of this, I can fuss this and say, does it need to be a little bit more round as opposed to this kind of pinchy shape that it is um, or not, you know, depending on, depending on your needs. I think probably we want it to be just a little bit more round than it was and then we can scale it by holding down shift and make sure that it intersects completely in there and that gives us the the end of that so when we trim that off that'll be a that'll be a, a you know a poly a, a poly surface closed poly surface when we when we convert to nerves now up here we have a similar situation in the fact that this shape you know is maybe not exactly what we were hoping for. And so what I want to do is I actually want to, 
I'm going to click this uh, edge of this guy, and I'm going to duplicate the edge of this so that we have a curve that we can work to. And then I'm going to take this edge, and I'm going to align it. Uh, let's see, in the subview menu. There is an align. Actually, you know what? I'm not even going to do that. I'm going to just turn the points on. I'm thinking about that, and I don't think that's going to do what I want it to do. So let's do this. I'm going to turn the points on for this guy. And I'm just going to snap these to this curve with my option. And we're going to just use a near snap. And the goal here is not necessarily to end up with a perfect circle. The goal here is to end up with it close enough that we can trim it and end up with a blend surface at the end of the day. And that, that is what we're going to actually end up doing. This last one moved. And then this edge, let's scale. It looks like I moved the whole thing, didn't I? I did. It's back. Our part. Let's put it back where it's supposed to be. There we go. So you can see that we're kind of close here, right? And if I if I scale this in three dimensions, I'm going to get it pretty close to where I want it to be. If I go to the top view, I can decide like how do I want these two pieces to relate. And in this case, I think I think I want them to relate fairly closely. It looks like did I move off my center line? There we go. All right. Seeing a mismatch here somewhere. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do the nuclear option, which is to command shift drag and get rid of half the model and then re mirror it. Oops. There we go. There is a reflect command in Rhino, but I'm going to just mirror it at this point because I pretty much know what I want it to do. There we go. That feels better. some edges down here there are some points that didn't want to stitch so let's grab those run the stitch command average them in the middle same thing down here and you can see that we're pretty close to where you know our lineup here is supposed to be and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a little game of <clears throat> a little game of horseshoes and the fact that I want it to get close enough so that what I can do is trim this off after we convert to NURBS and then run a blend surface from here into a into a perfect circle. And then that way I can get all of the benefits of modeling in sub D um, without worrying too much about whether or not, you know, it's it's precise, so to speak. So um, so I'm going to just, I'm going to let that roll like that. And I'm just going to adjust this just a little bit. 
and we'll call that a day. All right, so we're going to call that we call that close enough. Maybe we'll maybe we'll give it one more little quick adjustment here and just give it make it just a hair wider like that. And then what we can do is we can decide like, okay, do we want to go through and actually add in all the other little bits and pieces in here? Or do we want to do those pieces in nerves? And I think 50 minutes in, I think I'm probably going to switch to nerves because we can go fast that way instead of trying to fight the topology for sub D. I see a lot of people when they get into sub D, they start kind of getting beat up by the sub D um, and they can't get the shapes that they want and they can't make it do you know the things that they want it to do and all that kind of stuff and so i would i would just encourage you to to not not fight it like you know get get it as close as you can get and then go back to what you're comfortable with which is you know which is nerves right and so in this case like i'm gonna pull that shape in and i'm gonna get that really feeling good right there but then i'm going to let that kind of disappear because i can always come back later and and model this kind of stuff in nerves so let's go ahead and do that let's run the two nerves command and gotta spell it right nerves and i'm going to go ahead and just delete the ob delete the input object now if you're doing client work and if your clients are anything like my old clients used to be, um, I would not use this. I would not delete the input object. I would keep the sub D and put it on a layer and then just hide the layer for when the client comes back and says, you know what, I, I have an idea that I want to change something just a little teeny tiny bit. And, um, and you know, so I need you to go back and make this modification. If you don't have the sub D, it becomes a complete pain in the butt to try and go back and recreate the sub D. So I keep that. But for this demo, I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. And we're going to just run and let this turn into a standard nerves object. So now this is just a this is just this is just a rhino model now, right? This is there's nothing in this that's special. It's surfaces, it's everything that we already know how to deal with and all that kind of stuff, right? And so we can trim it, we can, we can, you know, do all of the things that we wanted to do with it, no problem. And so at this point, I feel good about that as a choice because I want to start focusing on like this transition up here. So if I grab this edge again, right, this curve, and I, and I set it kind of here, and I'm going to hide everything except this and this. And so I'm going to make a little proxy object. I'm going to just drag this off like that, right? Because I want to be able to have something that I can that I can match to. And I'm going to trim this back probably to about here because that's going to give me enough space to be able to blend from this surface into this surface and end up with a result that's going to look good. So let's go ahead and run a blend surface let's go from here to here and let's chain everything so i'm going to chain this and chain that and probably want to look at this in shaded view and we can see that we end up with like a really nice blend i think what it, i think i'm going to just make this position at one because i want that to just kind of blend out nicely and you can see that that it's it's tracking fairly decently in here. We may want to add a few more shapes. If I just add a shape kind of in here, and then let's add another shape kind of down here just to help make sure that our ISO curves are traveling kind of how we want them to travel. And then say, okay. And what we end up with is this object now is joined in and if we go to rendered view, you can see that we end up with a really nice transition. It's tough to see in white. Let's add a shade, add a material to it. Okay. 
So we end up with a really nice transition between there, which gives you all of the precision that you need out of your NURBS object, but all of the, the organic, you know, shapiness that you need out of your out of your sub D, right? So that's kind of the the best of both worlds scenario. And if we if we bring this back, you can see that that then does actually line up really nicely. So let's let's look at the rest of the details on this. And I can actually cap this at this point and end up with a closed object because we flattened that end out and we flattened this end out. And so if we look at it, this is now a a closed polysurface. So we can enjoy the benefits of doing things like booleans and things like that. So let's look at kind of doing the details on this thing and we'll bring it home here pretty quick. So there's a there's a material break in this thing that kind of comes all the way around and I'm going to hide my my um, ISO curves on this for a little bit. Um, if you go to the properties I can shut off my ISO curve density and then that gives me a, a little bit cleaner view. The ISO curves are still there. You didn't make the surface any simpler. It just makes the display a little easier to deal with. All right. So we've got a we've got a material break that comes all the way around here. So let's go ahead and draw that. And I'm going to pick up the pace just a little bit because we're in an hour already and I want to try and get through as much of this as I can. And we're going to come out here. Get one there. And all why I'm doing this, I'm keeping rule of three in mind. So if you actually look at the way that this curve is structured, there's a point here that's an anchor. There's only three for here. Now, this curve has a little bit of an inflection in this direction, which means I need one, two, three in order to make that inflection. So now I can adjust how much that inflection is up or down, right? I made my corner, one, two, three. This shape has a curve in it. So there has to be one point in the center because it's one, two, three that makes up that transition right there, which means that I can adjust this going this way. I don't need 25 points. I don't need eight points in here. I need one. I'm making a transition here, one, two, three. Now, there's a big transition that goes through the center of this thing. So that means that this point, this point, and this point make up that huge transition. And so I can adjust it by either pulling it this way or this way. And this is this this using this idea, using this rule of three concept is going to clean up the curves that you make so much you won't you won't even believe it. And when you clean up your curves, your surfaces are going to be better. When you clean up your surfaces, your models are going to be better and everything's going to be better. Right. And so if we adjust this all the way that we want, we can then just take this and blow this through this part or we can even split it. into two pieces. And so now we've got this piece and this piece, and we can go in rendered mode and we can apply a new material here. In version eight, the, the interface between the Mac and the PC becomes much, much closer. And um, it, uh, I'm not sad that that's happening. So let's do this. Let's bring our reflectivity down a little bit. And then let's throw this on there. And we can see our we can see our curve break now. And if we wanted to, we could start, you know, we could start adding materials to the rest of the thing so that we can start to see, get a little bit cleaner. My mouse is delaying. Um, a little clearer picture of what this thing is supposed to look like. And so this has. That's gray. This is black. And obviously, if we had more time, we would start getting into things like adding the knurling to this and all sorts of stuff like that. Now, these two parts have a gap between them, which looks dumb. So I'm going to grab this piece and we'll do a little we'll do a little dance here. So I'm going to actually 
shift control click this piece i'm going to drag it off tap alt make a copy click on it shift drag scale extrude a little plug boolean it together bring my parts back and that gap will, that gap will be gone now Okay, so that like starts to look a little bit more decent. We can also do sub-object assignment. Like if this is supposed to be black, we can just shift control click, assign to objects. And even though this is a symbol, single object, you can, you can um, do sub-object selection and, and add that piece. All right, let's look at the vents on this thing. And I've been avoiding them for a little bit because I think that's probably gonna be the most difficult part of this model. But there is a, uh, there is a cut line that runs all the way around the inside of this that makes up that that piece. And so I'm actually going to copy paste and I'm going to scale this line in just a little bit so that I can cheat and steal that cut line to start with. And if I isolate that, I can repurpose those points to get this curve back, so to speak. And here, I don't need that point, so I'm going to delete it. And I don't need that point, so I'm going to delete it. And I actually don't even need that point because I actually don't even need that point either. And so, because that makes up my, my curve, my transition, and then this is going to make up the rest of my shape. And so let's go down here and let's pull this guy and everybody's always like why don't you just draw a new curve and I can but there's there's something about being able to like you know utilize these pieces that allow you to get the the character of the curves to be a little bit more um, consistent and so in school we used to refer to that as family of shapes and the family of shape tends to be a little bit more consistent if you if you do that. So now we've got this shape here, and then it's actually broken up into a couple of little sub shapes. So let's go ahead and draw those while we've while we're here. And if we copy paste, shift scale and offset, you know, we'll also do this. But um, I actually like scale because it gives a little thick thin, whereas offset is a little bit more. Um, I like this kind of like where it gets thin and then it gets big and then it gets thin and then it gets big again. Um, I kind of prefer that as an appearance over a direct offset. The other thing about offset is it tends to make really um, heavy curves. And so sometimes that can uh, be, a, be a problematic situation. So I'm going to just draw the rest of these curves in here. And we'll trim. Apologize, there's construction going on upstairs if you are hearing saws running. And then let's copy paste one more time. And I'm going to shift drag scale. And then we can get our vents in here. And I'm going to just draw one curve like that. And then I'm going to drag, tap alt, drag tap alt and i'm going to use this as my vein width so i'm going to copy both of them and we'll do that and then we can come back and trim that up later but let's finish drawing everything first for family of shape i'm going to steal this and i'm going to just scale it a little bit there and then we'll draw this if i was doing this for a client i would go through and like measure these and make sure they're all consistent and all that kind of stuff for demo we just get to fun and model with our pants off All right, so that's all our that's all our our 
setup now. So now we need to look and see like what goes with what. And so this, this stuff in here, um, if we grab these guys and then we grab these guys, I'm going to run curve Boolean and we'll be able to pick kind of what we keep out of all of this. Delete all my input. I want to keep that. I want to keep, actually, I don't want to keep that. I want to keep that and that and that and that and that. And that will give me all my vent cutouts and stuff like that, right? And then this guy is going to just be a split of that. So I need to join those and then this is going to be a this is going to be actually a little it looks like we've got a little tangency issue down there so let's fix that let's match match this guy and this guy we're going to do a tangency we're not going to average we'll just force that like that there we go And I'm going to shut history off for the time being because it keeps popping that warning up. So this gives us most of the details that we need to throw this together. I am going <clears> to <throat> copy and paste this. And then I'm going to move it. Actually, I'm going to scale it a little bit. I'm going to mute for a second and clear my voice. Sorry. All right. So let's scale this a little bit. Shift drag on that. And that gives us kind of the right thing up here, but not up here. So I'm just going to redraw that curve the way I want it. And then trim. Usually a Windows modeler in the Escape key and the tilde key are, I keep hitting the tilde key instead of the escape key <laughs> on the Mac keyboard because it's organized differently. All right, so let's think about how we want to do this. And so what we want is we want a little bit of a valley here, right? So this is, this is going to be on our surface. This is going to be below our surface a little bit. So we need to make that whole thing first. And so I'm going to just bring these back so i want this and this and this object and let's go to shaded view and take a look and see what we've got all right so these two objects what i'm going to do is i'm just going to bring these through the object like that right and we're going to split and i could do this with a curve too it doesn't matter I'm going to split this object with these and I can delete these now because they're not important. So what I've done is I basically split this up into three surfaces. And so I'm going to delete this, which is modeling. We're going to model that gap. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to scale. I'm going to delete this side too. We'll do both sides at the same time. I'm going to do this guy and this guy, and then I'm going to just scale these slightly to the center like that. And that's going to give the offset that we need to run a blend surface chained between here and here. And I'm going to run this at tangency on both sides because we don't need to get crazy. And then I want to just take a quick look at it and see, see how my ISO curves are twisting really badly here. So I'm going to give it a couple of little helpers just in the corners so that it it straightens out as it goes through there. Usually once you add a few of them, it it joins the program and says, okay, I know what I know what the intent is here and it straightens out, but sometimes you have to kind of really explicitly lay out, especially where the corners are. And we'll go ahead and run that. Now I could mirror this 
and and save some time um you know later down the road but i think i'm just gonna blast ahead and just run a second do a second um a second blend surface in here if i can find it in my list there it is <laughs> we're gonna chain the edges double click double click stop it chain edges uh, do the auto chain there we go there we go and then we're going to add some shapes and again this is just to help the the iso curves kind of find their way around the corner so you can see that in areas where they're twisting that it's you know it still works like the surface is still building and it's still okay but i just don't like the organization of those iso curves and so if we add a few shapes it helps it to kind of get settled all right we're going to join all that up and let's take a quick look at it so now we've got that nice little that nice little divoted inset in there right so now we can go ahead and start putting our details in there apologize for the noise sorry And let's just go ahead and let's split. Um, actually, let's do the exact same thing that we just did, but let's do it. Let's copy paste and let's shift scale these. Copy paste, shift scale. And, you know, again, if this was client work, I would be taking the time to actually measure all of this stuff out and make sure that it was all, you know, dialed in perfect and all that kind of stuff. But we're moving fast here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I want to split this, but this centerpiece is going to be our gap. And so sometimes you model surfaces and sometimes you model the gap. And in this case, we're modeling the gap. So let's go split. Let's split with all of this stuff. And then what we can do is get rid of the gap pieces. We'll do that on both sides. And then we'll grab these pieces. We're going to scale these to the center. I may go a little bit deeper on these because they're supposed to be vents. And then instead of doing um, blend surface, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just loft these things together. And then as a refinement later down the you know later down in the modeling process, I would probably um, go through and fillet this stuff, but we're not going to have time to do that for this particular model. So. And because it's nice and, you know, because it's copied from one to another, it should go together nicely as long as you pick appropriately. Loft is sensitive, by the way, to where you pick. So if I pick here and then I pick here, the loft is going to go backwards. See that? See how it's twisted like that? Um, you can actually fix that by going into the align curves and then this button right here and then straighten that out. So if you've had loft misbehave on you in the past, that's that's the way to fix it. But it is actually sensitive to where you pick. All right, so we're just gonna stitch this off stuff all together. You could use loft, you could use edge surf, you could use two rail sweep, you could use all sorts of ways to do this. Just depends on what's working for you at the time. I don't get too hung up on whether or not something is quote right or quote wrong when it comes to modeling things. 
I mean, in my life, yeah. I mean, certainly, <laughs> you know, you got to be a decent human being. But when it comes to modeling, lying, cheating, and stealing is completely okay as far as I'm concerned. Whatever gets whatever gets you, you know, where you need to be. So I think instead of going through that um, twice, I think I'm going to just uh, make this, I'm going to make an executive decision. We're going to split this guy in half, and then we'll just mirror it at the end of the day. Uh, let's go from the center line. Modeling stuff twice isn't fun. All right, so let's do the same thing back here. Uh, Command, uh, copy paste, shift scale, copy paste, shift scale. And we have to do this individually because if we were to do them all together, it would do it, um, it would uh, scale by the bounding box of all the selected pieces at one time instead of, instead of just individual pieces. And so it wouldn't give you the result that you're looking for. So let's do that. We'll grab this guy and we will split again. Same process. Go to shaded view, get rid of our gap pieces. These gap pieces we're going to get rid of. The Mac is a little fussier about right click versus space bar versus all that kind of stuff for enter. So you're, you're seeing my, a little bit of my Windows versus Mac struggle here. And I'm going to scale from the center here. And I'm just going to bring those in probably about that far. And then we're going to do the same thing we did before. Now, a trick, because this is made up of several edges, loft, I'd have to loft, 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 loft. Blend surface set to position, if I chain this, if I set this to position, it does basically the exact same thing as loft, but it lets me use multi-surface input or multi-edge input. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and use that. I'm going to chain all of that. Come on. Ah that give me the right edge. I'm like watch somebody doing something something wrong over and over again huh here we go all right let's do one more time we're going to chain here and it does a nice job you know sometimes loft can get a little um messy Blend surface tends to do a pretty decent job. And in fact, you can actually, if we chain this, if we go all the way around this guy, actually not once, well, got a tangent break on it. So let's do first edge. Chain edges, chain continuity. If we set the chain continuity to position, We can do it all in one shot, which is lovely, which I find to be a little bit faster than trying to go through and loft all that stuff. Problem is it doesn't remember that you set it to chain, which is annoying, but such is life. And that gets us all of those. We'll join it up with that. 
And that gives us our part. We can mirror this now. And that gives us our part back to where it was. Let's go to render view and take a look. Fantastic. So the I think where are we at? We're at 1021. So we've got about 10 minutes to land this under an hour and a half. How are we doing? Everybody bored to tears yet, or is this still working for you? Any questions so far? Let's make these let's make these two little details right here. And I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna actually make these two little details with um, a little Boolean cutter. And for the purposes of this, I'm going to use a trick that I used in the toy industry a lot of times because we used to lie, cheat, and steal all the time in the toy industry when it comes to um, models. And what I'm going to do is instead of trying to like figure out how to get this thing to land perfectly, I'm going to actually just curve Boolean these guys and I'm going to make a little cutter. And the way that I'm going to do that is if I drag this out and make an object, right? I'm going to cap this. And then I'm going to do two Booleans. I'm going to Boolean difference from this using this, right? And that gives me a cutter that is cut to the right shape of the side of the object. Now I can take this and I can just poke it into the model just a little bit, whatever it is, the depth of that cut line that I want. Now I'm going to do a Boolean difference, and I'm going to do it opposite. I'm going to do it from this using this. And that gives me that little cut line pushed into the side of there. And I'll mirror that thing over. Actually, I'm not even going to bother. I'll just mirror the whole part over at the end. All right, so we're going to do the same thing with the circle piece. So let's draw, let's, let's take a look at our drawing and just make that little cookie cutter that we push into the side, right? And so we're going to do a rectangle rounded from the center. We're going to find the center of the circle and we'll just add that little detail and then we'll make a plane out of this. We come up here and just do a, do a, um, a planar curve surface, and then take this thing and extrude it out. Whoop. And then same thing, Boolean, oh, Boolean out of it first. So we're gonna Boolean difference from this using that. And then we're gonna take this and we'll just push it in just a tiny little bit. I use this detail all the time. In version eight, there's a feature called push pull that's coming out that makes this workflow so insanely good because you just project curves on the side and you just go push pull push pull push pull push pull so these vents we would just project the curves on we'd grab these surfaces and just push them in it's fabulous it's one of my favorite new features of v8 if you have v version 7 by the way um you are eligible to participate in the v8 whip and if you don't have the v8 whip yet um please get it and give it a shot and see what you think um, we would love to have your feedback on that. So I'm going to go to the top view. I'm going to control shift drag, get rid of all of this and that, and we'll just mirror zero join back. All right, join all that up. And let's get render view and see how we did. All right, so that's our little detail, dude. And we, we can even, if we don't like this guy here, we can um, we can delete these faces. Like, I originally was thinking in my head that this detail would be pushed in farther, so I don't like this, so I'm going to delete it. And then I'm going to just take this, move it in like that, and then we'll do a blend surface. Chained 
to position, set it to position and say, okay, and then we'll join that back up. And then maybe even we even want to do a sub object material assignment so that it looks like it's supposed to. Okay. Hour 26, we're doing great. Um, all we need to do is add a couple of buttons in here and we can do that with uh, sub D probably be the easy way to get there. Um, I think what I'm going to do is, uh, let's see, it looks like there's a, a lock button with a bevel and there's a speed switch and an on off switch. All right. So let's go ahead and let's, let's do it. Let's go for it. If I'm, if I'm boring you to tears, feel free. You can bail. You won't hurt my feelings. <laughs> All right. So let's grab this and I'm just going to pull a little shape into this switch like that. that look let's center it up scale it out and then we can do things like if we wanted to we can add some detail to this like we could inset this and you know we could could add a little thumb ridge to there by just extruding that in a little bit and then we can make this you know tighter softer whatever we want to do but I think for the purpose of this demo I think we'll call that we'll call that pretty good let's make it a little bigger and there's not much room for it to slide so let's make it a little shorter that's supposed to be the on off button. So we'll at least give it a little bit of room so that it can slide back and forth. Maybe that's a little tall. And maybe that shape's not quite right. Let's make a new material. We'll make it Kind of a bluish, kind of a grayish, something like that. And, you know, obviously we'd go back and we'd, we'd, we'd need to add the relief cuts for where the thing is going to slide and all that kind of stuff. But for the presentation at this point, we'll just make it easy on ourselves. And then um, let's do for this button for the cylinder. Let's go to the right view and let's make a sub D cylinder. I love sub D's for buttons because they're they're just they're super easy. <laughs> it's like nothing nothing easier than being able to modify this stuff and push it around. So this is like the speed controller thing. So let's push this in like that. Let's grab this edge and scale it. Let's put a crease on this. And let's put a crease on that. And one of my favorite tricks is to do this where you've got, you know, the little, the, the softness of sub D with the crease added to it. And then when you convert to NURBS, you can always put a radius on here if you want. Or in sub D, we can go and add a bevel to it. And this is easier in box mode. And add a little bit more detail to get that nice kind of like soft filleted edge. And then you know, depending on whether we push this in or out, you can actually create additional little details on that. If you haven't used Subd yet, please start playing with it. It's really fun. 
it's really fun and it's really like you know it's really useful and there is just a lot of potential here so i'm going to leave that just kind of shoved into space and it looks like i need to move it forward like that we would trim it and figure out like you know how to how to integrate it in and put a cut line around it and all that kind of stuff um, if we were gonna be doing this for client work but if you wanted to just print it right you can leave these parts overlapping like this because the thing's all closed make a big mesh and just jam it through your printer and then hold it in your hand and see is the switch in the right spot is this in the right spot does it need to move forward or backward all that kind of stuff these are the the early concept stuff is where you would want to make those decisions and and you know be able to tell whether or not this does you know what you need it to do all right so the last thing is this little call it lock up here and i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to do a little cheaty trick here and i'm going to do a cylinder out of sub b and i actually want it kind of aligned a little better so let's do it again like that there we go so i'm going to pull this out and then i'm going to kind of make this into whatever shape that I was kind of hoping that this thing would be. And let's just jam this in like that. Let's grab this edge and rotate it. The other thing that I like about sub D is how like you can really kind of just beat the hell out of it and, and get shapes quickly. And then decide later whether that's, you know, whether you want to continue to mess with it or not. Um, but in this case, you know, this is kind of, kind of what I'm thinking. And again, you know, we can design this on the fly and decide, like, do we want it to go like that? Do we want it to go like this? You know, what do we want this thing to kind of do? And does it? you know does it reach out like that or not and get it you know about what we want and then i'm going to inset this one and then i'm just going to push it in a little bit to give myself that you know where that call it lock would be and then i'm going to just extrude it out and just get the button out of it too and then i can crease this make that sharp so I get the entire detail all at one all in one shot and then let's add a little finger divot in there and then if we wanted to sharpen this up or not you know we can we can just bring this up or down depending on what what kind of sharpness we need so I think kind of something like that feels about right and then let's make let's go to two nerves and then let's trim let's boolean these two parts together and they boolean wonderfully and then let's add a little blend to the edge of this thing and just make it you know make it live its best little nerves life um, let's do a blend edge i'm gonna chain it that's way too big uh, I'm going to preview it, and that's going to be make a mess, but yeah, that's way too big. Take a look at that and say, yeah, that kind of that kind of is doing what I what I want it to do. So I'm going to run it, let it do its thing. We'll go to rendered view, and let's just add our add our material to this guy. Get all those pieces. One left. The sub object material assignment is what I'm doing here. So I'm, sh I'm command shift clicking to select the parts and then calling it a day. So I think 1035, I'm going to call five minutes over a win and I'm going to call it here unless there's any other questions. Any other questions anybody have?
comment, public ridicule. You can get it on, you can get it recorded if you want to just shame me publicly at this point. <laughs> no, it was awesome. Thank you so much for the tutorial. It was brilliant. You're wonderful. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, it. it. It was great. Thank you. Cool. 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 I'm a, these all get posted on um, YouTube, by the way. So um, our, our YouTube is Rhinoceros 3D. And um, this this all gets posted there, and then we also have a Vimeo page that no one under twenty five years old is. <laughs> <of>. <laughs> but if you want to watch it without ads, it's on Vimeo. If not, it's on YouTube, like everybody else in the rest of the planet is going to go see it on YouTube. So, um, you know, this model from this point, because everything on here is closed, and I'm gonna. I'm going to be bold and say that. So let's say uh, if we say sell open polysurface, it looks like it looks like we do have some open. Ah, and the reason it's open is because I had this broken up um, when I did the uh, when I did the split. But now that I've joined it, if I do if I do sell open polysurface, let's see what is open. We can take a look and see what is open. Um, and once we get that all closed up, we can um, throw this through a printer and take a look at it. Let me see what's, and figure out what's open. Thought I had it all closed, but there we go. Let's do naked edges. Ah, looks like I've got a, looks like I missed a, missed a, uh, missed a um, mirroring a part over here. Um, these little singularities in the corner, um, there is a command called remove all naked micro edges. And when you run that, what it does is it goes through and it finds all of those things and gets rid of them. So if we, if we were to um, just, let's do command shift, this one, this one, that one. I think that's all that's missing and mirror them and join this up and then remove all naked micro edges. This should now be a closed object and you can see down in here in the command line it's a closed object. So because we did this and if we run cell open polysurface and check it and it passes, we get rid of all of our curves or we put them on a layer or whatever i can take this whole thing now mesh it as one big pile leaving the stuff intersecting right because this is intersecting with that this is intersecting with that you know this and this and this and this are all intersecting but because those are all closed objects as long as the normals are pointing out and you mesh the part you can throw it through a printer without having to go through and boolean all this stuff up and trim it all out which i find is a huge time savings because the um especially at the early concept phase, say you print one of these and you figure out like these, these, you know, these vents are biting into the side of your finger and they feel terrible. You know, you don't want to invest hours and hours and hours into, into filleting all of those things and making them, you know, beautiful and perfect when it's going to come out of the printer and it's going to, you know, it's going to feel awful in your hand. So a lot of times when I'm in a design, you know, project like this, I'll get, no farther than this and i'll actually just throw it through a printer and see what it feels like and then make adjustments and iterate and revise and stuff from there i don't fill it things i don't you know get into blends and all that kind of stuff i just get here shove it out see how it feels and then move on so um so i think in an hour and a half hour and 40 minutes with some blabbering um you know this is kind of something that we could we could be in good shape and you know if you've got a fast printer, you could have something on your desk by the end of the day, which is kind of cool. So um, other than that, if there's no other questions, I'll let you go. Thank you for joining. Um, like I said, these are all going to be posted on uh, Rhinoceros 3D. And um, and I appreciate. Quick question. Shoot, shoot. Yeah. What would How would I locate this particular lesson? Is, do you have a title to it or your name or what, what's the best way it's to gonna be It's going to be on Rhinoceros 3D and it'll be, um, I'm going to, this is going to be called like Getting Started Rhino for Mac Multi-Tool or something like that. So okay. I, like that. I was originally, yeah. originally going to call it Spinny McSpin Face, but I think that's harder to find. <laughs> <on your face. laughs> There's so many spots. <laughs>
it's a little a little harder to find that way when it's searching for it. I want to see the multi pill video, but um, anyway. Um, so that's it. And then actually, it looks like I lost my my sub object material assignment. So let's just go ahead and throw that back on there. And if we do picture along the side of the body, so that's your multi tool. It's the it's your you know personalized multi tool. <laughs> I have a yeah. face for radio. Nobody wants to see my face on the side of anything. So. <laughs> <laughs> So that we can do our we can do our sub object material assignment and let's add these two back and then we'll call it we'll call that done. Air Jordan, you know. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right. Thank you so very much. You're very welcome. It, it My was name's Kyle You're it welcome. Was great. Yeah, thank you. Master, master. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, my name is Kyle Houchins. This is Rhino Getting Started Rhino for Mac. Go make great stuff. Talk to you soon. Thank you.